The following program is video supplemental instruction. VSI is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu. All right, Rob, I'm moving on to exam three. So this is going to be the 30 exam problem one. So problem one states, a meter stick on a horizontal frictionless table top is pivoted at the 80 centimeter mark. Two forces are applied to the stick, both of them horizontal, i.e. in the plane of the table, and perpendicular to the stick. One force, F1, acts on the end of the stick at zero centimeters as shown. A second force, F2, not shown, acts on the end of the stick, or is applied perpendicularly at the 100 centimeter end of the stick. So F1 acts at zero, F2 is not shown, but it acts at 100 centimeters. If the stick does not move, find the force exerted by the pivot on the stick. So, you have some meter stick. And we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Um, well, we haven't technically proven it yet, but 
I have stated that if, if the force of the pivot has to point down, then the force of the pivot can't be equal to zero because it has to balance these guys out. So it actually eliminates a third option, the option of the FP being equal to zero. We know FP cannot be equal to zero because it has to balance out F1 and F2. Now to figure out what the magnitude of it is in terms of F1 and F2, we can just go to our force equation. So that equilibrium states that some of the forces on your any axis must be equal to zero. So I'm going to set a frame of reference with up being positive and say that a positive F1 minus force due to the pivot FP plus F2, because it's going to be positive because it's pointing upwards, must be equal to zero. Thus, FP must be equal to F1 plus F2. Now, they actually write it in such a way that the magnitude of FP is equal to magnitude of F1 plus magnitude of F2. Now they write it like this because they're using everything in vector notation, and we know that we're not going to actually add the vectors together. We just care about the magnitudes of the vectors, the numerical values. When you're using Newton's law, everything is a numerical value already. So this is this is really saying the same exact thing here. So we have three situations. We know this guy can't be equal to zero, so that eliminates that choice. We know FP must be directed opposite to F1, and we know the magnitude is going to be equal to the magnitudes of F1 and F2, according to Newton's law. So that gives us choice one, which is going to be our correct answer. A good way to approach these problems to guarantee that you get the correct answer is to not only find the right answer, but to prove or at least know why the other answers are actually wrong, which is what I was doing right here. So if you can actually prove the other four wrong, then you're in really good shape. Now, I'm not saying to spend too much time doing that if you're, for, you're sure about your answer that you got it right, but it's a, it's a nice little comfort to know that all the other answers have to be wrong. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, www.teachingcenter.ufl.edu.